Mr. Jim Nance is on the line for you. Well, hello, friends. Look at you. <laughs> Making some time. Uh, where are you right now? I'm back at the uh, media center, having just come back from Butler Cabin and a little walkthrough of the green jacket ceremony. So we're ready to roll, man. The weather, we know that's going to be iffy, but what a leaderboard we have here at the start. Okay, explain this, that you had to do a run-through with the green jacket, but you've done this for decades. <laughs> it's a, it's as much a technical rehearsal oh, okay. uh, as it is anything else. When you roll in pieces, you roll in the piece that shows some of the moments in the past at that moment of coronation, and you have uh, leaderboards to go through top 12 and ties, and, of course, you walk it through with uh, the chairman. And... Um, you know, there's a low amateur that's going to be, in all likelihood, Sam Bennett's going to be a part of that movie. So we're just kind of walking through the elements. Nothing too stressful. All right. You called your uh, 32nd and last Final Four in your hometown of Houston. How difficult was it as the clock is ticking down because the game wasn't in doubt of trying to kind of pick the right words to finish up? <laughs> it was tough, i got to tell you. I... I have to say, I, I was shaking a little bit, and my voice was definitely trembling, and I felt like I was about to verbally four-putt, but somehow <laughs> I was able to close my eyes and go with the claw grip, and uh, the words came out kind of the way I wanted them to. I, I had not had anything written out or thought through. I know that Raft, at one point, maybe two minutes to go in the game, tried to engage yeah. in, in that discussion. I just didn't feel right about it. It was a, a moment when UConn was celebrating on the bench, and and I made some reference to this is their moment, not mine, and I thought that probably would be it. But uh, Mark Wolf, our amazing producer, uh, asked if uh, I would uh, – and I actually asked Grant and Raff to say goodbye. Say goodbye to Jimmy. And they made some nice remarks, and um, and then I came in was just some thoughts, some broad thoughts about what it's been like, you know, the, to try to find the story and to understand that we're covering dreamers. And if you just take a little bit of time and listen to people, everyone has something to say. Everybody wants to be heard. You know, not just the social media barking noise of people that want to have a hot take on everything. I'm talking everybody. Everyone is listening right now, has their own personal story. Everybody wants to be heard. Take time to listen and be kind. That's what I said. And <laughs> he was at still 20 on the count to commercial, maybe, maybe 15. And it just struck me that it was a good time to, to say thank you for being my friend. Was it always going to be Houston or was there another there was scenario? Well, actually, it wasn't going to be. Actually, in 2019, after Virginia won the championship, I started talking to Sean McManus and David Burson, and I, I told them that, you know, my kids are young. My two, I've got my older daughter, Caroline, who was with me in Houston and loves the Final Four and the bonding event that has become between the two of us. But, you know, I wanted it to be on a CBS year. We alternate years when it's it's beamed out over CBS or Turner, and nothing against Turner. It's been a magnificent partnership, but I thought my goodbye should be on CBS. So I said, I'm thinking maybe 21 in Indy. It would mark the 30-year anniversary of my first time sitting next to Billy Packer and calling it. And uh, lo and behold, the, the, the 20 tournament gets taken off the books. You know, it was the week before COVID really became um, a cancellation event across the country, and we lost the 20 tournament to COVID, a COVID casualty. So now I didn't know all those months leading up what 21 would look like. I knew it would be sparsely attended as we got closer, and it just didn't feel right. And it was during that time as I was holed up in uh, the Conrad Hotel with, with three meals a day being delivered to my door, not allowed to uh, interact or even have a meal with Raph or Grant or Tracy. Um, uh, this was you know, was not the right time to, to, to go out on. I'd already made that determination a couple months in advance. But it was at that point where I looked ahead and said, 23 is the next time it's on CBS, and it's in Houston, and it's just jumping off the page. And that needs to be the place. For me, I'm into contextualizing things and where something starts, something ends, beginning, middle, and an end. And it felt right to me. It felt in symmetry um, that I started there and I would – exit the stage there. Started my career with basketball through the University of Houston basketball program. It was my gateway to the business. 
And I wanted to go back to Houston and make that the place to step aside. So it worked out perfectly for, for my purposes. I can just still can't believe how generous everyone was um, in all the goodbyes. I'm overwhelmed by it, to be honest. And I'm trying as much as I can to get my head, which is still in the building back in Houston, uh, transported somehow here to Augusta. So I'm fully ready to go this weekend on the Masters call. But are you on the clock for how long you're going to do the Masters? Well, you, I think you might remember this, but I've, I've, I've often said that I've wanted to be able to broadcast 50 Masters. It was Ken oh, Venturi, right. yep. who put that in my head when I was riding back to the compound in a golf cart driven by Mr. Venturi. In 1986, we just watched Jack Nicklaus win that epic, historic six-green jacket, and he makes this amazing comment to me. He says, young man, how old are you? And I said, I'm 26. He says, I think someday you'll be the first to ever say they broadcast 50 Masters. But you'll never live to see a day better than that, than this around Augusta. And right there, he didn't know it. He just set my goal. He, he basically gave me the game plan for my career. And I always thought as a tribute to Ken and what's deeply in my heart, this event, I wanted to be there for 50. Ken Venturi said it to me when I was just three and a half years out of college. So I'm making this speech, Dan, a few years later, well, actually many years later in L.A., and Ken and Jack Whitaker introduced me, as bizarre as that sounds. They're my presenters. And I told that story about how I wanted to work 50. Later that night, we're at the Hotel Bel Air Bar, and Whitaker looks at me and says, Jimmy, I heard what you said up there about 50. I said, yes, sir, what did you think? He says, you got to do 51. I said, why? He said, you do the math on it. Your 51st Masters will be the 100th playing of the Masters. And one of the sweetest things anyone's ever said, he said, I think you need to be there for that. And I think Augusta would like to have you there for that, to be able to cross one century into the start of the second. And so now Whitaker has his fingerprints on that goal. So I adjust it. So I want to be here until at least 2036, <laughs> God willing, and have a chance to do that. Do you have a green jacket? Uh the- <laughs> <laughs> you mean like a windbreaker or uh... <laughs> no i mean shouldn't they it's like an honorary no 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 contributions like to the game or something i mean <laughs> hey i have been blessed beyond belief to be able to come here this is my 38th by the way on that tally and uh, i still get the chill bumps every time i step foot on property for the first time every year i return i just it's better than than the last. And, uh, no, I don't have a green jacket, but I'm honored to try to lend a voice to this tournament and and connect all the years. You know, golf leans on history a lot. And this sport uh, yeah, in particular, but this place especially, is such a part of the heritage of the tournament. And that's why you often hear me, Well, I'll go ahead and say it. I was going to save it for the weekend. (laughs) It's a tradition unlike any other. Okay, so I um, I love history, and I love how history can be tied to any sport if you make the effort and you do the research, you take the time. I try to tie history into college basketball, and now I'll never call another basketball game. And I have so much history that's floating around in my head that has no place to go now. There, there's no outlet for it. So. The next time um, we're in the same area, let's go out to dinner and just let me talk for about four hours about the history so I can open up some ramp space. (laughs) We're talking to uh, Jim Dance on the call for the Masters coming up this weekend. Has your wife ever said, Jim, would you use the Masters voice around me? (laughs) No. No. No, but I do get a lot of people, I'm I'm serious, who come up to me in most random places, and it truly is daily. I would say there aren't many days in a year that someone doesn't ask me to say a tradition unlike any other. <laughs> Most people think it's a tradition like no other. That's incorrect. Okay. It's unlike, unlike any other. Any other. Unlike. Um, how big so, of a storyline? That's been requested. How big of a storyline is Live for, at least in your mind, coming up this weekend? Live Tour players versus the PGA Tour. I think that the Masters just it trumps everything. It's it's the standalone event. It's the greatest event in golf. Yeah, you know we've got Brooks Kepka uh, in contention here, and uh, he's out early today and has an early birdie. So he's at the moment, as we speak, has a one shot lead. 
over Jason Day, who's already started his second round, and Victor Hovland and John Rahm, who are going to go in the afternoon. So Kepka's the uh, – I'm trying to find out here. I think he's the only guy from that tour that's in the top 20 right now. And he's coming off a win last week. Um, it's not going to be ignored, but this is the Masters tournament. This isn't about all that other stuff that's going on in the world of golf. Yeah, I agree, and and I I hope that's what it is. I, you know, but Brooks Kepka is playing great golf, and you can't avoid that. That it's live tour, Cam Smith or Patrick Reed, whoever you know happens to right. uh, to be there, and also Nicholson's couple under. He's yeah. out there this morning already making birdie or two. Yeah. Did you keep anything from your last uh, championship game? Did you keep anything from Houston? Well, I first off, I was presented all kinds of wonderful gifts. Um, the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, presented me uh, with a proclamation naming one of the weekend days uh, after me. So uh, I hope it was good to everybody in the state that day that I presided over it. Um, Mayor Sylvester Turner in Houston uh, gave me a proclamation on the court naming uh, Saturday, April 1st, as Jim Nance Day in Houston. And I kind of thought maybe this was a, an April Fool's joke. <laughs> they were going to take it away from me, but it held up. <laughs> I'm proud to say. Um, you know, I didn't – I take away a ton of memories, first off. That's most important of all. But what I did is I brought things to it instead of taking. And what I brought with me were, were mementos, uh, l- little pieces of, of – uh, of my past that I wanted to be represented on, on that night. Now I haven't talked about it. Um, maybe I just briefly on the court made a passing comment about it, it really has. not nobody's picked up on this and not that they should, but you asked. So my, my stats man and dear friend, Pat McGrath passed away on literally the eve of the tournament the tournament started in Dayton the night before he passed away in his hotel room of a heart attack. He'd been, Sitting to my left for 30 years, I was always by his side, what I like to say. And he was a wonderful friend. Um, we did hundreds of games together, and everybody that's done play-by-play work with Pat. I wore one of his ties as a pocket square. I had a tie on, a forget-me-not tie, um, that um, is in honor of my father. And then I had on the table... I had three oversized pictures that represented my career. Now, I put my board on top of it, but I had really staring back at me when I would move my board around. A picture with Billy Packer, a picture with Bob Dekas and Bob Fishman and Billy. That was my core group that did 20 of those final fours together. And then a picture of my current group with Tracy and Raft and Grant. And um, I had them all right there. And lastly... Leaning up against the monitor in front of me, I had a picture of my mom and my dad on Saturday and uh, just a picture of my mom on Monday, which marked six months to the day since she passed away. She was so excited about being able to attend one more event. She became immobile uh, the last few years, was completely fine and all, except she was out of nowhere. Her heart gave out on her on on October 3rd. And uh, there had already been talk about the goodbye in Houston, and that would be the last event she could she could get to, she could manage to, to get her into the building. So I had all of them in a, in a weird kind of way looking at me and I'm looking at them and it strengthened me because as the weekend was going on, I was more and more fatigued and overwhelmed by all the tributes and the nice things people were saying. I just couldn't keep up with all the correspondence. I'm still trying to get back to people, but, um, Mon- Monday uh, morning, I felt like I was not prepared to do the game. Emotionally, I was teetering on the edge of, of, of great fatigue and, you know, deep emotion. Not because I'm saying goodbye. It's just the fact that I felt like I was the last link for a lot of people that had worked that tournament for nearly 40 years. And I was repping them. And I, I just uh, I hadn't felt that weak uh, mentally going into an event in, in decades. Maybe since Freddie won the Masters in 92 and I didn't know if I could hold it together then. So. Uh, you know, somehow it came time to perform, and um, I felt I felt good once the light, the tally light came on, and I think all of those people I just mentioned, uh, I was riding their shoulders to the finish line. Well, have fun this weekend as always, and uh, thanks for being a friend, Jim. 
Yeah, um, you know, I said that, and I really meant that. Um, everybody has a story, and I just thought everybody that's been a part of that basketball part of my life for so long, I just wanted them to know. I sincerely mean it, and thank you for being my friend. That's how I felt. And, Dan, people don't know. They know you have a lot of guests. You've got tremendous contacts and relationships. You are a wonderful friend. Thank you, bud. Thank you, Jim. That's Jim Nance. He'll be on the call coming up this weekend. Uh, CBS, also Golf Channel, ESPN.